What's cracking? Big doubts. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs got to eat. And today we're going over some bust proof picks for 2021 fantasy football. This is for all y'all that have been hurt out there. For all y'all that have been heartbroken. This is for all y'all that have been backstabbed by some bitches in fantasy football. This is for y'all. You want to play it safe? You're tired of getting hurt? I've got five players that you can draft and rest assured that they're going to get you fantasy points week in and week out. Now, disclaimer, they might not have the highest upside. They might not win your leagues, but they're good picks. They're safety valves. You load up the rest of your roster with upside, with sexiness, with sexy picks. You've got a well-groomed team. It's basically like you got good hair, you got good skin, you're tall, you're tan. Maybe you got a gap in your front teeth. That's what these safety players are. They're not a necessary dent in your look, but they're not and who knows, maybe they've got a higher ceiling than I'm giving them credit for. But I know they're good players, and I know you'll like to draft them. And I know that you'll love my fucking content if you continue coming by to it. All right, so hit that subscribe button. Scroll down below. It takes two seconds and hit it and hit thumbs up while you're down there. Let's get into thy content. Before we do that, y'all know we got to tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. And let's eat. <laughs> First man's up on this list. It is a, it is sort of a sexy name. It's a rookie running back. He goes by the name of Najee. Najee Harris. Pretty swaggy name, actually. And when you look at what he's done this preseason, first of all, I mean, the dude gets picked in the first round, okay? First round draft capital for running back is massive. I will caveat with saying we've seen first round running back busts, and especially in the recent years, we've seen plenty of them. It's very easy to spot them from far away. Which running back is going into a situation in which there are no competitors for touches you look at the ones that have, have busted in recent years and you look at like travis Etienne, about to not be a good fantasy football pick he's clearly going into a running back by committee with a psychotic head coach Najee harris is going into a situation where they don't have any other running backs they want to run the ball more they want to stop relying on big ben's 75 year old arm Najee harris clear cut 225 pound plus back going into a situation where mike tomlin is going to use him like he's used every other back in his history, dating back to Rashard Mendenhall, Willie Parker, Le'Veon Bell, James Conner, D'Angelo Williams. Like, Najee Harris is so safe when it comes to volume, and we're seeing that come to fruition in the preseason games. We have a two-game sample size now of the Steelers because they play in the Hall of Fame game as well. They've had 35 snaps with the first team. Najee Harris has played in 30 of them. I think that's like 87%. He's playing on third downs. He's playing on goal line opportunity. He is playing on every fucking snap. Now, this is a bust proof pick. I think the volume for Najee is going to be unbelievably high. When we're projecting players for fantasy football, we have to look at two things, right? We can only look at two things. We can look at efficiency and we can look at volume. This video is more about volume. It's hard to predict efficiency for a lot of these guys because we don't know what their offenses are going to bring to them, just like Pittsburgh. They got a bad offensive line. Who knows what becomes of this offense? We do know Najee's going to have a shitload of volume. So when you're picking in the second round, he's as safe as they come when it comes to volume because you're looking at other guys like Saquon. You're looking at who's hurt. You're looking at JT, who's going to be in a timeshare. You're looking at Joe Mixon, who's already proven to us that he kind of stinks. But when you get to Najee, bust proof pick, but you're, you're probably foregoing a guy like Antonio Gibson. So to say these guys are bust proof on this list doesn't mean that they are the best picks available at the time. I'm just telling y'all if you want to be safe, Najee Harris is a fantastic pick. If you like to shoot for upside, a guy like Antonio Gibson going off the board in the same spot has more upside. Okay. Najee doesn't have the upside Gibson does. Gibson has top three fantasy upside. Najee Harris does not because of the situation he's in, but he's safe as hell because there's no way that he doesn't end the 17 game season with 350 plus touches. Najee Harris absolutely safe blanket there as are both of the Rams wide receivers because Matthew Stafford comes in this is going to be a pass first offense now and the thing I, I mean we, we've seen it year in year out Woods Cup they are what this passing offense is Sean McVay wants to pass the ball when he has a quarterback that he could trust he even did it with Jared Goff in the first couple of years before he knew he couldn't trust him right he was like the girlfriend that was like oh yeah you go out with your friends and do your thing and then you go to the club you fucking pull up one time and you see her making out with somebody else that's what Sean McVay pulled up on Jared Goff, got rid of her, got the new hot girlfriend off Tinder. That's Matthew Stafford. And now they're going to unleash. And because Cam Akers is hurt, this is why we love a guy like Cooper Cup so much this year. 
because inside the 10 yard line, they're not going to run the ball right last year that reverted to running the ball heavily inside the 10 yard line because he did not trust Jared Goff. But the years prior, they had been a pass heavy team inside the 10 yard line. We saw that swap last year because he didn't trust him. He didn't want to turn over the ball when they were in clear point getting situations. And that led to Cooper Cup finishing with three touchdowns. Okay. Cooper Cup is usually a massive part of the game plan inside the red zone. So we know Woods is going to get carries. We know he's going to add on 100 to 200 rushing yards. We know he's going to be a PPR machine. We know Cooper Cup's going to be a PPR machine in the slot. We've seen Matthew Stafford pepper the slot targets to his guys over the middle. Both guys are going to be the center of this passing offense, an offense that's going to pass the ball heavily when they get near the end zone both of them are extremely safe picks you know you're looking at the the middle fourth end of the fourth early fifth for some of the non-competitive leagues maybe they are the perfect wide receiver too to just give you a nice little safety blanket there in the middle of your drafts player number four we've done three right we did Najee Harris we did Cooper Cup we did Robert Woods player number four we've got TJ Hawkinson man TJ Hawkinson like basically real quickly to give you the entire breakdown of how I'm approaching tight end strategies this year is I will not be paying up for any of the top tight ends okay one I just want Robert Tunyon that's that's who I want rounds 9 10 11 12 wherever you can get him Robert Tunyon is the guy that I want to own this year however the guys going before him you look at like the top bunch of guys Travis Kelsey I'm not going to take him in the first I would take him in the second Darren Waller not going to take him in the second I would take him in the third. George Kittle, not going to take him in the third. You guessed it. I'd motherfucking take him in the fourth. Kyle Pitts, not going to take him in the fourth. Also probably not going to take him in the fifth. Same thing with Mark Andrews. I am not targeting Pitts or Andrews, but when it comes to Hawkinson, if he drops into the late sixth, seventh round, I want all the Hawkinson I can get. So all the guys at the tight end position, I'm not taking at ADP. If they dropped me at value, I'm fine taking them. Hawkinson seems to be, he's safer than Andrews. He's safer than Kyle Pitts. He's safer than anyone going even close to behind him. Dallas Goddard, Noah, Noah Fant, Tyler Higby. It's not even close. He's, he should be in his own tier behind the top three, in my humble ass opinion. TJ Hawkinson saw over 100 targets last year. He was in his second year. Every report out of camp has been fucking blazing about TJ Hawkinson, that he's been the best player in Detroit by far this summer. You know, we, we could take their word for it, but here's why I'm looking at this. Like, again, he had over 100 targets last year. There was only five tight ends that did it. And very rarely do we see that happen. They have, this is a real number. They have 327 vacated targets leaving this offense, right? You think of Marvin Jones and there goes 115. Kenny Galladay was out most of the year with 32. But then you have smaller guys like Danny Amendola. All their running backs are gone. Like Carrion Johnson, Adrian Peterson, like Jamal Agnew. Like all these little role players that you don't think of combined to leave 327 targets in the wake of this passing offense. And sure, they bring in some players. They bring in Jamal Williams, Tyrell Williams. All the shitty all the shitty Williams brothers are now in Detroit. They can start their own fucking car company. Brashad Perriman, Amon Ross St. Brown. No proven players there. TJ Hawkinson is the 1A target to no one's 1B. So the fact that he already saw 100 targets and now there's 327 vacated targets in this offense, his volume floor is so, so high. So if you're fucking excited about eight to nine fantasy points per game, look no further than TJ Hawkinson. The touchdown upside, but the volume upside, the more heavily skewed towards your league being PPR focused, Hawkinson, great play. If you're in a tight end premium league, Hawkinson, great play because tight end premium favors the guys that get more volume. It doesn't just favor the top end tight ends, favors specifically because you're getting 1.5 PPR or 1 PPR to your half PPR, whatever it is. Tight end premium Hawkinson, I think, is an, an absolute steal at his ADP. Like Mark Andrews does not catch a lot of balls, should be way behind TJ Hawkinson in rankings, in, uh, in standings like that. Standard league, I'm a little less shy on or a little less bullish on TJ Hawkinson because he's not going to catch a lot of touchdown passes, shit like that. But TJ Hawkinson, so many, so many fucking targets available there and nobody to scoop him up besides him, TJ Hawkinson. And then the last guy on this list, super fucking obvious, Allen Robinson. Okay. Allen Robinson is just a shoe in to, we already know he's the wide receiver 11 on the year. I don't need to, to watch the next 16, 17 weeks of the season. I already know what he's going to finish as. I feel like legitimately if you took a 16 game split, no matter what games in his career, right? Like you took the first 16 games, you took the 33rd game to the 49th game, you took the 22nd game to the 38th game, he's going to be the he's going to be 90 for 1208 touchdowns, no matter fucking what. And he did it last year, and that was with Nick Foles, that was with Mitch Trubisky, Andy Dalton, he'll probably be benched sooner rather than later. And Justin Fields looked phenomenal 
in their first preseason game. I cannot wait to see him on the field as a full-time starter. He did actually come up with a groin injury at practice yesterday or today, I believe. So he's going to be sidelined for a little bit. Um, that might push Andy Dalton into the starting role for the first couple weeks, weeks, which I assume to be the case already. So regardless, I think Dalton, Dalton is, is exactly as good as Nick Foles was last year and probably better. So I'm not going to go out and use that corny ass line. We're like, this is the best quarterback he's ever played with. Like every quarterback is the worst quarterback he's ever played with every time, no matter what their fucking ceiling is. Okay. Andy Dalton will be fine. Like I like the veteran. I like the veteran. He knows he's going to rely. He's it's like the only target in that offense. Realistically, they don't have a real tight end of consequence yet. Cole Komet, nice, exciting guy to talk about as like a sleeper or breakout, but he's improving shit in the NFL. Listen, like as much as we're talking about TJ Hawkinson, like the Allen Robinson is the TJ Hawkinson to this Bears offense. And now they have a little bit more stability because I think they have more stability at the quarterback position. So with Allen Robinson, end of third, early fourth, you know exactly what you're getting out of him. You're getting 80 to 90 catches. You're getting 1,100 to 1,200 yards, and you're getting six to 10 touchdowns. If he has a lucky touchdown year, if he has if he has a low touch on your six touchdowns, that's like what you expected. If he ends up having a lucky touchdown year and scores like 10 or 11, he's going to finish as like a top six, seven, eight fantasy wide receiver. So you could pencil him in for that. He's pretty fucking boring, to be honest with you. He's not someone who's going to win your league, but he's safety, he's safety, safety, safety written all fucking over him. So if you if you want to start with two running backs, right, if you go with uh, you're at the turn, right, and you go with like Najee and Austin Eckler at the back turn, you can probably grab Allen Robinson and McLaurin or Allen Robinson and CeeDee Lamb, or you could just fucking triple, quadruple down on running backs and fucking hit J.K. Dobbins and Chris Carson if you got enough flex spots. That's what I'm trying to do, to be honest with you. But Allen Robinson, listen, don't get cute. Don't get sexy. Just take Allen Robinson and be done with it. It. Are we getting choppy right now? Are we getting choppy? I don't think we're getting choppy. All right. Well, that's going to be today's video. I'm sorry this was uh, a little less like logical and less analytical, but I haven't had a lot of time to really dive into my videos and, and go in depth. But y'all know what I'm about, and I give you the best information I could literally off the top of my dome. I think these five players, very safe picks. Najee Harris, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, TJ Hawkinson, Allen Robinson. I highly doubt any of those guys will bust this year outside of an injury. They're all safe picks as wide receiver twos or tight end ones or, you know, back end running back ones in Najee Harris's case. So you can you could draft them and not have to worry about them being risky. They obviously come with a little bit less upside because the safety is factored into it via volume or via a bad offense or whatever the case may be. If you enjoyed today's video, we do videos like this every single day. So just subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button. Please, God, make sure that the volume has been on for this podcast as it has. Woo! Uh, that's it. And uh, see y'all tomorrow on Fade the Public.